Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and another Monday Mix. Today is the 22nd of April 2024. I've uh, got a fair bit to get through today, uh, but there's no coins again to show you this week. Hooray! My wallet is happy for the second week running, but uh, next week I don't think it will be. So we're going to start off with a little bit of a quiz for you. Now I've got three coins here. One is brilliant and circulated, which is the 2019 Wedgwood £2 coin. I've also got a 2007 Act for the Abolition of the Slave Trade, that is from Circulation. Uh, we've also got a 2009 from Circulation, Charles Darwin. So the question to you is, what links all three? And I'll be coming back to that at the end of the video. Now a few things, just in case you've missed it. A few Royal Proclamations have announced some coins that are about to be produced the first one being the latest in the chinese zodiac series which is going to be year of the snake now the year of the snake is not to be until 2025 so i would expect this one coming out maybe from june july onwards and this is supposed to be going to depict a snake on a backdrop of grassland on the 12th of April 2024, Royal Proclamation announced a couple of the £5 in the Bond series. The first one is going to be the James Bond pilot in the hovercraft, which obviously must be from the film of the noughties. And from the film Spectre, which was released in 2015, is going to be a depiction of a seaplane. Now the most exciting news is one of a 50 pence coin. Now this is going to be celebrating uh, the 80th anniversary of D-Day, which is going to happen on the 6th of June of 2024. Now original D-Day landings was the 6th of June 1944. Now this 50 pence coin is supposed to show soldiers disembarking the landing craft uh, with the various five names of the beaches that they landed at. Now... I would hope, fingers crossed, that um, this coin will be going into circulation. Somehow I doubt it, but it would be very nice to see, especially as it uh, honours quite a, an important period in history. Now I'm going to use poetic license here um, for the first two things, because normally I do things of what's happened on the day. Um, but this happened yesterday the 21st of april so the first one up is the birth of the late queen elizabeth ii now she would have been 98 years old as of yesterday uh, unfortunately she sadly passed away in september 2022 now secondly on the 21st of april 1983 we saw the first one pound coin appear so the one pound coin was brought out to replace the old titchy green one pound note uh, which was demonetized on the 11th of march 1988 but i can remember the you know the absolutely huge uh, green uh, one pound notes a while back so this was issued in, if the camera will focus, 1983. And this round one pound was minted up to and including 2015 for circulation. But it did um, get demonetized on the 15th of October 2017. Well, of course, we had the uh, 12-sided new style £1 coin take its place. Now, the, the last year minted was 2015, as I said. There was a Royal Shield, which was designed by Matthew Dent, but it had the fourth port rate of Ayn Rang Broadly on the obverse. And then we had the Royal Arms, which was done by Timothy Nord and the fifth port rate done by Geordie Clark 
on the obverse. Right, so we move on to the 22nd of April and uh, what happened on this day. Well, births wise, there was uh, Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov was born, who was better known as Vladimir Lenin. He was born on the 22nd of April 1870. Also, there was American actor Jack Nicholson was born, 22nd of April 1937. Remember his films, uh, One Flew Over the, the Cuckoo's Nest, The Shining, A Few Good Men, amongst others. And we also saw the birth of a uh, physicist, J. Robert Oppenheimer, 22nd of April 1904. Now, that uh, film has just been shown on the TV. Um, I did uh, catch a bit, a few bits of it, but I didn't watch it right the way through. I'll have to do that at some point. Now, deaths, the Spanish writer Miguel de Cervantes, he died on the 22nd of April, 1616. He's, uh, one of his famous works was The Adventures of Don Quixote, with, uh, obviously, his sidekick Sancho Panza. And just uh, a little-known fact, Panza, P-A-N-Z-A, is actually Spanish for belly. Now, on the 22nd of April, 2023, so it was just a year ago, uh, we saw the death of Australian actor Barry Humphreys, best known as uh, DM Edna Everidge, his alter ego, and also Sir Les Patterson. Now, we also saw the death of Richard Nixon on the 22nd of April, way back in 1994, and he was aged 81 when he passed away. Now, another death was that of James Hargraves, who was an English weaver, carpenter and inventor. He died on the 22nd of April, 1778, aged 57, and he was the inventor of the spinning jenny. And he was the man responsible for the mechanisation of spinning, because it was actually in the time of the Industrial Revolution. Now, jenny was actually um, a Lancashire slang word for engine, and I believe it is still used in parts of Lancashire to this day. Now we're going to stay with spinners or spinning uh, because on the 22nd of April 1980 the number one song in the charts was actually that of the spinners but uh, they had to change the name to the Detroit Spinners which I'll uh, let you know why in a minute. They were also known as the Motown Spinners. They were enjoying their second week at number one after knocking uh, the jam off number one a couple of weeks prior. Their song was a medley of Working My Way Back To You and Forgive Me Girl. Now that he used uh, the Detroit Spinners in the UK to prevent a mix-up with the Liverpudlian folk band, The Spinners, who had the same name. Now events-wise, we had uh, the US Congress on the 22nd of April 1864 uh, passed the Coinage Act of 1864, which led to in God We Trust being printed on coins and then it was later done on all currency. Now the earliest coin I can find uh, with that legend on is this five cent coin or nickel from 1866. But uh, over the years all coins did have that put on. Now another death which happened on the 22nd of April 1833 was that of English engineer Richard Trevithick. And uh, those of you who are watching, you should be aware of the 2004 coin issued by the Royal Mint to honour Richard Trevithick and his steam locomotive. Now, Richard Trevithick was born in Tregeyoran, which was a small village in Cornwall. And thanks to the findings from him, uh, on February the 21st, 1804, the world's first ever railway journey took place. Now, it wasn't sort of a passenger oriented thing, because even though George Stevenson is known as the father of the railways, he didn't actually build his first steam locomotive until 1814. And obviously they had that Stockton to Darlington run. Now, he painted um, a high-pressure steam engine where all the others were using, like, a low-pressure. 
In 1802, it was constructed at the Hill Foundry, which is a poor town in Cornwall, in 1811 for threshing purposes uh, at Trewithin and was used on the estate until 1879. Now, last October, plans were revealed to try and bring the Trevithic engine back from the Science Museum in London, where it had been on display for many years, to the original site, Trewithin's Trevithic barn. Now, his initial demo of a um, steam carriage was followed by the first steam locomotive on rails. That was called the Catch Me Who Can. Apparently was uh, given that name by somebody's uh, daughter. I think uh, it was called the Trevithic Circus. It was just like a round track. But uh, it did get derailed because they were using wooden rails rather than the, the big heavy iron ones. Now his inventions allowed small and lighter steam engines to be used, making the development of the steam locomotive very important. Uh, but despite his visionary work, he never received the acclaim he deserved and he actually died in poverty. Although he's now celebrated in Cambon every year with the day festivities called Trevithic Day, and it's on the last Saturday of April, so this Saturday, 27th of April, 24, will be the next Trevithic Day. Very interesting. So there was quite a bit of research went into that. Um... That uh, mintage figure, by the way, is it's probably like mid-range because uh, the, the highest minted one of uh, 10,191,000 is the World War II or the end of World War II coin. This one had a mintage of 5,004,500. There was also a BU version of 117,294 and a proof of 35,020. Right, so finally, let's go back to that little question I posed earlier on, the link to these three coins. Uh, well, again, I'm using Poetic License. I'm just going to uh, put this down here because we'll start off with the Charles Darwin coin. Now, he actually died on the 19th of April 1882, so it was just uh, three days ago, age 73. And he was born on the 12th of February 1809. Now this coin celebrated 200 years since his birth. Uh, the reverse design was done by uh, Susie Zamet. And uh, Charles Down was a naturalist, geologist and biologist. And he's widely recognised for his uh, contribution to the evolution biology with his proposal that all species of life descended from a common ancestor and this is now generally accepted as a fundamental concept in science. Now this coin had a circulated mintage of 3,903,000. It had a BU of 119,713 and a proof of 34,438. Now we wrote on the origin of species, uh, which is actually on the edge inscription on the origin of species. And he was actually honoured uh, when he died with a burial in Westminster Abbey. So that's just part of it. So where do the rest come in? Well, the next one I'm going to do is Josiah Wedgwood. Josiah Wedgwood was born 12th of July 1730 and died on the 3rd of January 1794. Now he experimented with pottery to produce, produce uh, various glazes and the green glaze apparently was one of the well-known ones. Um, he was the leader in the industrialisation of the manufacture of European pottery. So Josiah Wedgwood married um, Sarah Wedgwood, which was actually his distant 
Cousin. They had eight children, uh, one of which, Susanna Wedgwood, actually married a Robert Darwin, who had a son called Charles Darwin. So Josiah Wedgwood is actually the grandfather of Charles Darwin. So that's where one link comes in. Now there was also um, a Josiah Wedgwood Jr. or Josiah Wedgwood II, which was uh, Josiah Wedgwood's uh, son. He married a, a girl called Elizabeth Allen. Uh, which actually turns out to be uh, the name of one of the girls there that actually was in my class at school we are back in the 60s. Now they had a, a daughter called Emma and Emma Darwin married Charles. Well it was Emma Wedgwood but they, she married Charles so I suppose the origin of the species coming true here because uh, in those times it wasn't uh, uncommon for f families to have eight kids upwards. Um, I've seen uh, some of them, you know, with 13 when I was doing my research. Now, uh, he never made porcelain um, during his lifetime, only stoneware and earthenware. But he was cre credited with being a pioneer of modern marketing, offering direct mail, money back guarantees, self service, free delivery, buy one, get one free, and illustrated catalogues. And he also had uh, some showing rooms way down in, in London as well. Now, it these families were well known round about the pottery area in Stoke um, and both of them were staunch abolitionists, hated slavery. So in 1787 Henry Webber came to them with a design to produce an anti-slavery medal. And this is what they came up with. And, uh, and as you can see, the edge inscription we've seen somewhere before, haven't we? So, am I not a man and a brother, which is the edge inscription on the act for the abolition of the slave trade coin? So that's how all three coins are linked. And that endeth the lesson. So all I can say is thank you for watching. Hope it's been a bit informative of this week. It did, did take quite a bit of research. Uh, but until the next time, uh, keep on hunting, enjoy yourselves, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.